Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome you all to this next lecture in this course on analytical spectral and microscopy applications of inorganic compounds and nanomaterials. In the past couple of classes, we have started focusing on the application aspects of the fluorescence. I have introduced all the basic concepts that is required and a few applications as well. Let us continue with those application aspects and uh, in this particular slide, uh, kindly I draw your attention to this particular slide. Uh, this slide uh, has a dinuclear copper complex where the two coppers are bridged uh, by a ligand and also by the halide. So, this X uh, refers to the halide in this. So, what we are uh, trying to look at is the, the ligand is being re uh, having substitutions like R. This is the uh, compound where the, this P center connects to the copper. So, this is the center which connects to the copper and then uh, this is the basic uh, kind of a moiety product. And in this case, this is the one which connects to the copper center and then you have an NME2 group. This case is a fluoro group. So, what we are looking is essentially a kind of a R group substitution on this. Okay. So, and uh, so that is what you try to look at uh, the fluorescence emission aspects of uh, each of these. So, we have several derivatives are there. Uh, the spectra may not have been shown for all of them, but several of them. So, please have a look at the spectrum that is shown. The spectrum that is shown here is the emission spectrum, which is measured when you excite at 375 nanometers, at least for these compounds. And there may be a different uh, excitation wavelength for others which is not important for this particular discussion. Okay, in this 1, 2, 3 corresponds to the corresponding ligand here and I correspond to the bridging ligand, uh, bridging uh, iodide ligand. So, these are the complexes. So, if you look at these each one uh, with the, with this one gives an emission spectrum here and uh, this one which is one coming from this one and uh, the next one the green which is coming from the 4 like that. So, you can try to map between these compounds on the corresponding emission spectra. So, what are we finding in this? So, we find in that as we change the R group correspondingly the position of this emission. So, in other words emission maximum is changing. So, it is changing somewhere from 450 on this left end to the right end which is the purple spectrum which is around 700. So, we know that the 450 is basically into the visible region and you keep moving across the visible region and you start entering into the 600 above which enters into the near IR region. So, what are you doing basically? So, by changing the R group, you are tuning the fluorescence emission. So, that means if you wanted to have an emission in the near IR, you can choose what exactly the kind of a side chain or the R group is required. So, R group can be identified from this list. I hope you understand. So, this is a series of compounds where the basic skeleton is same, the direct ligands are same, but the substitution on these uh, pyridyl moieties are different. So, only those substitutions do affect. So, uh, the substitutions affect because of what? Because of the electronic factors. So, the electronic factors will also make uh, the, the homolumo energy gap. So, it will affect on that too. So, you can always plot the this either the gap or the lumo energy with respect to the emission maximum. So, is the emission maximum goes from somewhere around 450 to around 700 plus you can see and uh, if you look at the, the gap versus the emission there is a kind of a linear trend. So, which means you can predict where the fluorescence emission is going to be for a given complex of this. So, in other words by changing your R group you can change the fluorescence emission 
or if you say that I wanted this particular fluorescence emission, you can design the corresponding side chain or the substituent. I hope that is clear this example. Okay, if so, let us move to the next uh, one. So, here is again another way of tuning the uh, luminescence, flu tuning the uh, fluorescence here. And this is the molecule, uh, please kindly have a look at uh, the slide. This is the molecule, the organic molecule, which binds to the zinc center. Okay. So, the zinc center through this uh, moiety of the nitrogen. So, one of these moieties. And then, if you look at the crystal structure of such a zinc complex, you can see the e zinc is connected with the two such ligands, two such ligands. You can see one of the ligand here, other ligand here, and the two chlorides. So, that is zinc is zinc 2 plus, and each ligand is a neutral. Therefore, this is a total thing is a neutral complex. So, zinc uh, 2 times to this ligand uh, plus 2 chlorides that is a neutral compound. And this compound if you look at crystallize and uh, uh, have a look at this particular structure shown on this slide, you can see the kind of a structure and the overlap, see the overlap of these things, the pi pi kind of a system. This is one aspect I wanted you to uh, make a note. Point number 2, come to the right corner of this uh, at the bottom corner of the right where I have shown this particular flow chart of this species can exist in positive like cationic form I, either here or there it is uh, one and the same or it can have an anionic on this particular uh, triazole kind of a part or it can have a uh, you know the zwitterion like anion cation on this side or anion cation on that side. So, you can have this particular molecule can be in a positive species or a negative species or is vitreonic species. So, why are we stressing on this? Reason is that each of these species will have a different excitation and different emission here. Yeah. So, in other words, a particular excitation will not excite all of these species, but some of these. Now, you come to the top uh, left panel on this particular uh, slide where you have the emission spectra where the excitation is written in this uh, small uh, box here. The black one is at 340, the red one is at 350, the green one is 360, the blue one is 370 and you can follow it up. So, these are all excitation and this is all emission. So, you see the emission of the first one here, emission maximum, emission maximum for this is uh, here, here, here. So, that means you are shifting the emission maximum by changing the the excitation frequency. So, you are, so why by just by changing how it happens? Because each one of these excitation will excite any one of these species, not all of them. So, that is why you have this one. In the previous example, it was different. In the previous example, you have a different R group, therefore, you have a different emission band. Here, there is no different R group, but there are different kinds of species a neutral species, a cationic species of different types an anionic species or a zwitterionic species. So, therefore, different excitations would essentially fluoresce at different that is why you are getting. So, this is another way that a material can be tuned to have a tunable use a luminescence or tunable fluorescence. In this case, it is basically the, the fluorescence because you are using an excitation you are getting it that. I hope that aspect is clear to you. And uh, so, this is coming from the uh, not just from this ligand alone, this ligand when bound to the zinc center and you have a complex of this. So, this complex is the one which you are looking at the emission at various excitations. And what I mentioned to you is different excitations will activate different of these ones, therefore, you have a different emissions. So, for each of this paper, uh, each of this example, I am always giving the corresponding paper frame where I have taken you can use that information if you want to get more uh, thing. So, it is basically a pi to pi star transition and it is going from ultraviolet somewhere around very close to 400 and it is going to around uh, uh, 480 in that range going more towards the visible range. In the previous case, we are going from visible to the uh, near infrared. In this case, we are going from UV to the visible range. So, that means, you can have materials by changing the group or the substitution 
uh, or by changing the wavelength of excitation because of different kinds of species are formed, you can tune the things. So, hope that is clear. Let us move to another process of this, uh, which is referred as the fluorescence resonance energy transfer, and this is also known in the literature as a Foster resonance energy transfer. So, both are one and the same, and that is where let us look at the basic principle. So, in this case, so you consider the, your system having a donor and an acceptor. So, you can have both of these as uh, intra, that means in the same molecule, or that need not be in the same molecule, it can be in the inter as well. So, you can have the donor and you can have the acceptor connected together in the same molecule or there are two different species present in a solution or present in a solid away from each other, but the, the one can act as a donor, other can act as a acceptor, the two possible ways of this. That is the point number one. So, let us look at the concept having looked at uh, the donor and acceptor. So, a donor which basically donates, acceptor which basically accepts. So, what kind of a conditions we can look at that. We have already looked at the uh, Jablonski diagram in the past. Now, I draw your attention again uh, to this particular slide, where on the donor side, this is the uh, ground electronic state, this is the excited electronic state. You bring, you uh, shine light, which is called the lambda excitation, and that will take uh, the molecules from the ground electronic state to the excited electronic state, and the same kind of a process, whatever we talked about. And in the fluorescence, what happens comes to the ground vibration of the excited electronic state and returns to the ground electronic state, and that is what gives you the fluorescence. Now, this emission, if this emission matches with an absorption of the acceptor, okay, then that light which comes will be picked up by the acceptor, and the acceptor will be having an excitation in acceptor group or acceptor moiety or acceptor part. So, acceptor species. So, there, there will be an excitation going from the ground state to the excited electronic state. And then again, this, this acceptor now will also again return back, it will not stay in the excited state, because the fluorescence process, which is uh, in the uh, process of nano to uh, femtosecond region. So, therefore, that will return back and that gives the fluorescence. So, which means when you excite this at a particular wavelength, you will not find this emission in your spectrum, but you will find finally this emission. So, instead of finding this emission, you will find this emission. So, that does not mean the emission did not occur. This is emitting, but you are not able to absorb, uh, observe because it is immediately absorbed by this uh, acceptor. So, this is through a non radiative dipole dipole coupling. So, you will not observe this part. So, that means this is a hypothetical what you are showing, it is true it is happening, but we call it hypothetical in the whole process you do not see this at all. So, this emits, but you cannot observe because immediately it uh, absorbs, because the excitation process is faster as compared to the emission process. Now, you have a emission and that is what you are. So, such kind of a emission is referred as the fret. So, fluorescence resonance is happening. That means, this the fluorescence emission in resonance with the absorption of the acceptor. The donor emission is in resonance with the acceptor's absorption. That is what basically it means donor acceptor. So, for this, what, is, what should be the criteria? If you look at this right side uh, bottom uh, panel, you can see a wavelength and the intensity the red one is the one of the emission uh, uh, spectrum of the donor molecule, and this is the uh, black one is the emission spectrum for the acceptor molecule. Now, you see that there is a region of overlap. So, you have to have a greater overlap of this uh, to get the, the greater the thing. So, this is intensity and this is the uh, lambda of the emission. This is for the donor and this is for the acceptor. Okay. So, to have the fret, you should have this overlap. The greater the overlap, 
greater the fret efficiency of that is. And not only that, this also depends upon the distance between them. So, the distance is also important and the orientation of these things. Because that is because of the orbital kind of a orientations. The distance and the orientation of all these. All of these parameters affect the fluorescence, resonance, energy transfer of fret aspect of it. So, the donor acceptor need not be in the same molecule, can be in the same molecule, can also be these two or two different independent molecules, species, ions, anything which are present in the same medium and therefore, you have that. I hope that principal part is clear to you. Now, we will look at few examples to get a clarity of what I mentioned here. Okay, here in this slide, please have a look at it. I have shown three examples, one here on the top panel, one in the middle right, one in the left bottom. There are three different examples. There are hundreds, thousands of examples are known in the literature. It is humanly not possible to cover all of them. So, I picked up a few and this I picked up a few to give an importance for the coordination chemistry. So, and these things can also act as a sensors for that particular metal ion. So, the, so that means your fret process is not just for a basic understanding purpose, but converting this process into an application. Uh, look at the top left panel and there is a molecule. This molecule can take up an energy of 360 excitation and this emits at 470. So, the excitation coming from this and the emission is coming from here. So, 360 and 470. Now, let us assume that you added some cadmium 2 plus ions here and what will happen is cadmium 2 plus has an ability to bind to the coordination centers. So, what are the coordination centers? These are some of these, these N's, the N's and NH. So, you can see N, N, O, this O also and this NH, all of these, this amide NH, etc. So, you form a kind of a coordination sphere. So, coordination sphere around this one and as a result of that, this bond also breaks. Now, what happens? When, when you excite at 360, it will give emission at 470, but you cannot absorb. Reason is that 470 is further absorbed by this unit and finally, you find the emission from here. So, your emission at the net emission is 585 because the fret process in this particular orientation and these units are nearby. So, whatever comes out of this is absorbed by this and this gives the emission for that. So, kindly look at this example very carefully that when the cadmium 2 plus binds, there is a coordination and there is this bond breaks also. These are all known things in the thing and now, whatever the emission comes, uh, which is virtual, what we are talking about that virtual is absorbed by this one and what you observe is 585. So, 360 to 585 this is because of fret. If the metal ion is not there, 360 to the 470. Okay? So, I hope that is clear. Now, this can be used based on the intensity at the 585, you can find the amount of cadmium plus. You can do standardization curve first with the different concentrations and look at the fret fluorescence emission intensity, then plot as a function of concentration, get your normal curve and then you can go for the unknown kind of thing. So, that means this system will act as a uh, fluorescence sense, a fret sensor, fret fluorescence sensor for the cadmium ions. Same kind of a concept, but a different molecule here, a somewhat closer kind of a molecule you can see here and diethyl, this is the same moiety, but this moiety is different. Now, in this particular thing, this is the uh, fluorophore initially at 340, uh, here it was 360, here for 340 means UV absorption. Uh, excitation and this will give 490 as the emission. Now, if I put copper 2 plus ion, what will happen? The copper 2 plus will break this particular the unit bond and uh, this will be released. So, you have a oxo binding, nitrogen binding and this nitrogen binding etcetera, etcetera and as a result, whatever the emission comes at 490, supposed to have come at 490 would have been absorbed by this unit, this particular uh, unit and that gives an emission at 587. So, you have seen in the previous example 360 to 470 in the ligand, 
the 470 is not seen when the cadmium is there and 585 is seen. Similarly, here when copper is there, it is shows the 587 nanometer from the 340. So, because there is a fret between this to this unit. So, whatever is coming out of that is absorbed by this one. Okay. So, that means you can quantify the copper ions that are present by doing initially a standardization plot, standardization titration, then by plot, then by unknown. You can use that. So, that is where you can use a that is application aspect of it. Now, another example shown in the lower bottom panel of this particular slide uh, here, a very similar kind of a groups that you have in all these things. This group is very common and this kind of a group breaks when the metal ion comes here and here cadmium is breaking, here copper is breaking, etcetera, etcetera. Here you can see this is the ion 3 plus. So, this particular molecule, this uh, fluorophore takes the energy at 380 and emits at 515. Now, if you put some iron 3 plus ions, what will happen? This iron 3 plus will start binding to this, this uh, open up amide, oxygen, NHS, etc., etc., all of these. And then there is a transfer of energy going from this particular group this to this group. And therefore, so whatever is supposed to have come at 515 taken up by this unit and this unit gives an emission at 605. So, you can see a large huge amount of applications are there. So, only thing is you have to design a fluorophore that will have a change in its orientation, in its activity when you uh, add the metal ion to that. Okay. So, these are some examples. This is just the tip of the iceberg there are, as I said thousands of examples are there. And as this main this course is mainly focused at the inorganic complexes, therefore I took the examples of that for the application of it. I hope that is clear, both the process of fret and the examples. Let us look at an example of a different types in a protein system. Okay, so this uh, again I draw your attention to the slide here. A1 is referred as a fluorophore. It's a emission spectrum. Another fluorophore, uh, fluorophore 2, you can call probably this as a donor fluorophore and the, this is also fluorophore means this is one protein part, this is another protein part. Now, you mix them together or combine them together. Now, at a low concentration, example we are talking about, this fluorophore could be a protein, this could be another protein. So, when you mix them together at a low concentration, what will happen? In the low concentration, the, suppose if you put in a oil, there is one molecule here, one molecule here, one molecule. So, distance will be very far. So, and in a high concentration, this will be very close by. And that is what the concept that you are being using here. So, uh, on this side, you have in a low concentration, uh, the band overlap is smaller. And in a uh, high concentration, because they are very close, uh, therefore, the high overlap and therefore, you have a greater fret possibility. So, you will have a, a less uh, fret uh, or no fret. So, he, here you can have a greater fret. So, therefore, even concentration. So, that is because you have uh, you have the uh, fluorophore 1 and fluorophore 2, you have a donor and acceptor and you are taking a low concentration. At the low concentration, these are diluted, therefore, you have a farther apart. These things are basically going way farther apart. Therefore, the distance is uh, there between the species. So, their overlap is uh, less. So, in the higher concentration, the overlap is more. The same is depicted here. So, you have one is shown as the greenish, one is shown as the red. You can call one of them as a, uh, as a, as a donor, other as a acceptor. Donor gives its own thing and then absorbs by the acceptor and then acceptor gives the final emission. So, the concept again is clear to you for a simple fluorophore uh, could be two fluorophores 1 and 2 in the same medium uh, where the fret is occurring. So, again I draw once again your attention to this particular slide here and this you can see this is a the protein. So, a cyan fluorescent protein CFP and this part of it cyan color and the yellow fluorescent uh, protein YFP. So, CFP and YFP and they are, they are in the same molecule connected by some protein peptide chain and 
uh, you can break this peptide by using a peptidase and you can separate them you can leave them intact now let us say this is an intact of that and the 414 nanometer causes uh, an emission by this one which is at a 525 so if the linker is intact that means this one the excitation at the absorbance wavelength of uh, cfp this is the one uh, is 414 causes an emission by the yellow protein which is 525 due to the fret so this is so it is giving some emission that emission you are not seeing that emission is absorbed by this guy and then this gives the outer now how do i know that is the really fret now i just break the link here so how do you what is this link the link is a peptide link so therefore this peptide link can be broken by the peptidase enzyme so use the some peptidase enzyme and then a specific peptidase enzyme and then break this one so once you break what happens uh, the bluish portion cyan portion has come and this portion has come without this color that means no emission coming so that means this is not able to communicate whatever the outcome to this so the outcome is 475 not 525 so that means if this unit were not there it will emit at 475 unit is coupled it will give at 525 so that is where you have seen so now you see this is a fret intramolecularly when you break these two it became a no fret so that is where you can see things so the fret efficiency also depend on the, the concentration because the concentration will lead to the distance etc so here also if you go for a very high concentration of the protein you would start seeing some amount of fret so you can see you can understand the intramolecular fret all of these kinds of things okay i hope the principle of the fret everything is understood now we will move to some examples of the fluorescence now we have looked at the examples of the inorganic coordination complexes we have looked at the examples of, of the internal uh, the planarity non planarity etc for some coordination complexes coming compared to the ligand then we look at the fret process in the coordination complexes fret process in protein enzymes etc now we'll look at some applications in the nanomaterial side okay in the nanomaterial side this example focuses uh, an example kindly look at this particular slide this is a, a carbon nanoparticles prepared from different sources or different ways so that detail is not important so what you can say is these are all called the fluorescent carbon nanoparticle which is referred as the, the short form fcp uh, fluorescent carbon nanoparticles fcnp if you want you can put so these nanoparticles made from different sources could be the bluish fluorescent the greenish fluorescence or the yellowish fluorescence or the red dark red kind of a fluorescence variety of things so going from one to the other to the other so these are what you are seeing on this right panel on this side is there are three spectra in each of the case the first one is absorption the second one is excitation the third one is uh, emission so absorption excitation emission you can see the emission is going here the 450 460 to around 4 uh, you know 80 490 and this is going to around uh, 550 to 600 and this is going beyond so you have a you have some kind of a tuning so by varying the nature of your uh, carbon nanoparticles here uh, the the fluorescent carbon nanoparticle you can sweep the emission going from so what lower visible to about near ir kind of a so this can be utilized very well and the details are given over there so you can see so you can make the synthesis is very well known in the literature these are all made and the corresponding powders are shown corresponding solutions are shown and some of these may not be very clear from the slide so because these are all from the photograph you may not see the colors very well into this but you can accept the emission spectrum that way now this is uh, for one particular kind of a wavelength dependency of the carbon dots among these things wherein the wavelength excitation is done from 330 to 475 earlier also i have shown some example earlier for one of the organic molecule with a nitrogen binding bound to the zinc center which can exist in the cationic anionic zeotrionic kind of a forms similarly here a different kinds of the forms of these particular nanoparticles uh, of the same some of them gets excited at 330 some 360 370 etc so you can see the 330 is giving the uh, emission here 360 is giving here 370 is giving here 
So, if you take all the peak positions of this, then you will get the, the tuning of the emission and their emission intensities. So, intensities are changing, the positions are changing, therefore, fluorescent colors are changing. Okay. So, these are all excitation wavelengths and here you can get the emission wavelengths. Okay. So, basically we want to demonstrate that it is possible to make uh, such kind of a materials. So, uh, I have some more examples, uh, probably I will treat in the next uh, following up class and then you can see the continuity of uh, to get more clarity of these kind of an examples and get uh, uh, you know so that you will be able to pick up from the literature later on and be able to do your own judgment on these kind of things. Thank you very much. Thank you.